Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create large buttons with information on them using the Info Buttons widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. Some of these include different looks when the button is hovered over or variations in color, the option to use borders, icons, separators and more. So let's take a look at how you can use this widget and customize it for your own ends. Head over to the back end and in the Elementor sidebar search for Info button. There it is. Now let's drag it over to the right. I already have some content on my page and I'm adding the button to that so you can get a sense of how it will look in context so to say. If we look at the button, it has some default settings and content that we can use as a base and customize or change entirely. The options you'd need to do that are here on the left. The first one lets us choose which layout we'll be using. The button can be filled or outlined. I'll be using outline to start with. Then we can pick the button type, standard or icon boxed. Standard is set by default and this is what the icon box looks like. I'll stick with standard. OK. Then there's the size option. We can use it to make the button small instead of the default normal. Or change it to large or normal full width. I'll set mine back to normal. And this field is where we add the button text. I'll replace this. Just a sec. OK, there. And we can change the subtitle, actually subtext, for the button here. Give me a moment to add mine. Alright. Following that we have the button link field. So this is where you'd add the URL of the target page or wherever you want your visitors to go. I'll set a hashtag. This will create a link to the page that the button is already on, since I'm just doing this for the tutorial. But on your end, once you've set the appropriate URL, you can use the target option to pick if the link will open in the same window or a new one. Below that we can pick the button icon. Click here to open the icon library and then you can search for the icon you want. The library contains several icon packs so there's a pretty big selection. I'll use this one. Insert. And you can choose its position here. The default is right, but you can change that to left if you prefer. Now, the last set of options in the Content tab are Developer Tools. When we open them, we can see there is just one option here. And we can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. For starters, we have the typography options. With these, we can pick the font for our button. And it will apply to everything on the button, so both the main text and the subtext. Don't worry, you can also make separate adjustments for the subtext. I'll be showing you that as well. For now, if you set something like the size here, and you pick a certain pixel value for the main text, it will apply proportionally to the subtext as well. Let me show you. If I set 18 pixels here, the entire text increases while maintaining the ratio between the main and the subtext. After this we have the weight option, where we can turn the text bold or use one of the number values to find unit's weight. I'll stick with the default. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make the text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or normal, which is the same as our default. And using style, we can make our text normal, which is the same as default, or turn it italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, which is our default. Then the line height, whose value is in M's by default, I'll change that to pixels, and set 26 to get a bit more space between the main text and the subtext. Then the letter spacing option lets us create more space between the letters. OK, that's it for the typography options. Following that we have the subtext typography options. These are identical to the set of options we've just seen except they allow us to make separate adjustments that apply only to the subtext. So I don't want to waste your time by going over them again, I'll simply set 11 pixels for the font size. Then set 400 for the weight and transform the subtext to uppercase. 
Also, I'll change the line height value to pixels and set 24. After that, spread out the letters a bit by adding 1.7 for the value. Next, we have these switches where we can open the options for stylizing how the button will look normally or on hover. Switch between them to access the appropriate options. But let's start with the normal look. Here we have the text color. The option works on both the main and the subtext. You can use the slider or set a hex code to pick your color. I'll do the latter and make my text black. There is also the subtext color option if you want to make that part of the text different. I want everything to stay black as I set it above, so I won't change anything here. Now the next option, background color, only works with the filled button type, not the outlined one that I'm using at the moment. So I'll skip this for now and show it to you later using a different example. After that we have the border color option. You can set the hex code for the color or use this slider. Since I know which color I want, I'll use the hex code field. And there, a nice dove gray. Alright, now that we sorted that out, we can check out the settings for the button appearance on hover. As you can see, these options are a lot like the ones we've already seen. They just take effect when a user hovers over the button. And the main thing I want to show you here is that you can set a background color. It will work for the hover regardless of the button type you choose to use. I'll use a slightly paler shade of grey than my border. There, perfect. And I'm going to set the same shade for the border hover color. That will make my button seem filled when hovered over. And this is how it looks now. Ok, underneath this we have the border width option. You can adjust the width using the arrow keys or by typing in a pixel value. I'll leave mine like this. Then there's the border radius option. And we can use these fields to soften the edges of the border around our button. So we can curve these angles. And the more you increase the value, like so, the rounder the edges. And the last option is for the padding around the button content. By increasing it, we push the border outwards, away from the content. And you can change the values like this, simultaneously, or you can click here to delink the fields and adjust each one separately. Like this, I can set 14 pixels at the top, 25 on the right, 21 at the bottom, and 22 on the left. So each value can be different from all the others once you delink the fields. Alright, after this we have the icon style settings. Within them there's the option to adjust the icon size. I'll shrink mine a bit by setting 15 pixels. Then we have switches for adjusting normal and on hover icon appearance. We have the option to change the icon color here as well. So only the icon changes. I'll set mine to be black so it matches the button text. And on hover we have the icon hover color. Which I don't want to change as I prefer keeping my icon the same color when hovered over. And we have the move icon option as well. So it's like a tiny animation effect. So when we hover we can see the icon move. And it's set to horizontal short. If you change that to horizontal you get this look. And with vertical it looks like this. With diagonal you get this. And finally you can set it to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. And that's what I'll do. I already have a color change on hover and I want to keep my button elegant and understated. Ok, the next option is for setting the icon margin. And we can only change it for the right and the left margins. I'll delink the fields and add a bit more space for the right margin so that the text and the icon are further apart. There, perfect. Now I want to show you another example of what you can do with the info button widget. Another potential combination of settings. So going back to the widget menu, I'll search for info button again so I can add another example to my page. There. And I want the new button to be next to the first one. But Elementor will align elements vertically by default, so my new button isn't where I want it to be. To fix that, there are some changes I need to make. Generally, if you want to place multiple elements one next to the other in a section, but you don't want to divide your row into columns, there are a few things you need to do. Start by clicking on the first info button to select it. Then go to advanced and open the positioning section. In here you'll want to set the width to inline. And I'll make the same adjustment for my second button. 
By setting the width to inline, we are going to help our elements align side by side in the same column. And there, the buttons are next to each other. But they're practically glued together. To separate them a bit, I'll add a padding to one of my buttons. To do that, open Advanced and go to Padding. I'll delink the field so I can set a padding only for the left side. And 15 ought to do it. Now, all these settings in the Advanced tab are included with every Elementor widget, and since they're not exclusive to our key add-ons plugin, we won't be covering them further, which means we can go back and start customizing the new button. Now, I'm not going to go over every option with you again. I'll just show you another possible design for the info button. For the second one, I'll stick with the filled layout, so I won't change it to outline like the first one. In terms of customization, I'll add some different text to my button. And I'll do the same for the subtext, just to give you an idea of how the button can change its appearance when you use a different type of layout. OK. And I'll use a hashtag as a placeholder link again. Then I'll change the icon to something shopping related. This card, for example. Insert. And I'll position it to the left side again. OK. In typography, I'll use the same size and line height settings to keep both my buttons looking alike. There, perfect. And in subtext typography, I want to change the font size to 11 pixels. The weight can be 400, and I'll make the subtext uppercase. Finally, the line height can be in pixels, and I'll set 24. Then I'll set 1.7 for the letter spacing value. Alright. After that, I'll set black as the text color again. And I'll do the same for the subtext option, so it's going to be black as well. But after that, we have the first real difference. The background color option for the normal button display will work for us now, given that we're using the filled button type. I'll use this option to add a hex code that will make the button light blue. OK. I can skip the border color because the filled button type doesn't have a border. Then in the hover settings, we have the text hover color, which I'll set to be white. Perfect. And then we can have the subtext hover color. I'll set white here as well. Also, you should know this option appears if you set a particular subtext color for the normal button appearance. If you don't do that, this option won't appear. All right. Next, I'll adjust the background hover color as well. That one is going to be a more intense shade of blue than the normal button color. Let's see. There it is, perfect. Now, since I don't have a border, I can skip the border hover color and the border width. But the option underneath this, the border radius, will actually work for us. This option serves to curve the edges of the widget content, whether that content has a border or not. So I'm going to increase the values to, say, 10 pixels and make this button match the first one. Alongside that, I'll adjust the button paddings. Just the same as I did before, I'll delink the fields so I can make specific settings for each side of the padding. Give me a moment while I input them all. Alright. And in icon style, I want to set the size to 15 pixels. Then, for my normal icon color display, I'll use plain black to match my text. Alright. And for the settings on hover, my icon hover color is already white. We can see that here and from the six Fs that appear overhead. Following that, we have the move icon option. I want my icon to stay stationary, so I'll put none here. And last but not least, I'll adjust the icon margin on the right. So de-link the fields, and I'll set 10 pixels here. Alright, that's that. I can go to Update to save the changes I made. And if we take a look at the buttons now and hover over them, we can see how they change their appearance when the mouse slides over them. Now, having gone over all the options in the back end, you should know how to make any and all of these examples from the widgets page. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here or to create something entirely new, well, that's entirely up to you. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the info button widget work best with the style and design of your site. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its info button widget. 
If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!